All right, there it goes. We're going to try and install Windows 11 on this unsupported PC. Now, it's going to take a minute. You have to be patient. Things may be a little slower than you would expect. We're going to go for Pro. Click Next. Everything seems fine and dandy. Twiddle your thumbs. Be dory. Oh, rats. PC doesn't meet the minimum system requirements to install this version of Windows. For more information, visit the site or whatever. Oh, rats. All right, that's no big deal. Welcome back to the Tech Tank Trons channel, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Wilson, and we're going to talk about how to install Windows 11 on an unsupported PC. We'll actually be installing it on top of a server running Proxmox for a virtual environment. Um, now, hey, why you should listen to me? I have 28 years experience in working with Windows and computers, building them, taking them apart, configuring them, configuring operating systems, and that sort of thing. So stay tuned. So there's a couple of things before you begin, like any indication, like if you go to settings or anything like that, it's going to tell you you can't install Windows 11. So it's, it's, it's blatantly obvious, but you, you can go to the site, get the specs and all that. And we'll, you know, we discussed that in a previous video, but you'll have to download the Windows 11 ISO since you can't upgrade to Windows Update using you know that tool thanks to the compatibility check you'll get another message you will have to make a manual approach and that's what we're going to do today but before i do it i want to point out a couple of things all right so as i stated we'll be installing windows 11 on a dell r410 running proxmox and there's a couple of pointers that i wanted to make out beforehand at this time, installing Windows 11 on some unsupported hardware is possible, but you must understand that you do this at your own risk, and Microsoft will not likely support your install. This means it's possible you will not receive any updates and new features, or some of the features may not work correctly. So you pretty much do this at your own risk. Also, up until this point, installing Windows 11 on an unsupported PC may work in the event that you have a 64-bit processor. As Windows 11 is just accessible in the 64-bit versions, there is no 32-bit versions of Windows 11. So, proceeding forward, I'm going to walk you through what you need to do to install it on this type of setup. First, we're gonna upload the ISO to Proxmox and create the Windows 11 virtual machine. And we're gonna take a look at the steps as I do that now. All right, so first I'm gonna click upload for, you know, go to, you know, where my uh, ISOs are stored in Proxmox. And I'm gonna upload the Windows 11 ISO, as you can see here. It's gonna take a, you know, brief amount of time and this makes for you know a simple install now we're going to go ahead and create the vm i'm going to name it windows 11 3 because for me i have a little system my third installation of windows 11 we're gonna like use that ISO that I uploaded. We need to select the operating system. In this old version of Proxmox, we don't have Windows 11 provision. So we'll just use the latest Windows version available to us. For system, I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm gonna leave that default as is. 
hard disk. I'm going to up it a little bit. I am considering making this like my daily driver or a test daily driver. So I might give it, you know, a fairly sizable hard drive. And I'm going to put it on my disk too because it's, uh, it's a part of, it's not part of the raid. It's just on my experimental virtual machine drive. I'm going to set the disk size to 300 gigabytes so that I have a nice, comfortable installation to work with so that it has room to update and that sort of thing. All right, I'm going to give it two sockets and six cores, which makes for a total of 12 cores. It'll run. But it's not, and I'll tell you this much, it's not going to run as fast as, like, say, if you had modern hardware. That's the major disadvantage. That's... So we'll install 16 gigabytes of RAM. For the network, I'm not going to touch it. Just going to do the bridge and let it go. I'm going to confirm all my settings are correct and make sure that we are ready to go. Yeah, I was very thorough, you know, and I just reviewed the settings. I, I just don't want to leave no stone unturned. I don't want no problems or none of those issues. All right, so the next thing that we're going to get ready to do is run the virtual machine for Windows 11 and Proxmox. But before we do that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modifying the registry on a fresh install of Windows 11. We're going to run the Windows 11 installer. And if there's an issue, we're going to press Shift F10 to open the command line during the installation process. This is the only way to get into it. And when we do that, that command window comes up, we're going to type regedit and press enter. And that's going to bring us up to our registry, which looks a little something like this. Okay. Now I'm going to make two registry entries. First, I'm going to navigate to H key local machine system setup, create key most setup. And then what I'm going to do next is there's a couple of steps here. We're going to right click the main panel and select create a new D word 32 bit value. And we're going to give it the name allow upgrades with unsupported TPM or CPU. Then we're going to set its value to one and click OK. As you can see, we're going to go and we're going to create a new key. We're going to call it We're going to call it most setup. Of course, and then it's set. Then we're going to go into it and get that new D word 32 bit value. And this is not that difficult to do. I mean, this is minimal, minimal difficulty. So we're going to put as I specified, allow upgrades with unsupported EPM or CPU. And I'll put a disclaimer, like you could probably do a couple of these and or that, and it might just work for you. But I decided to go all the way because I know that I have an older machine and that I, oh yes. Um, what we want to do now is after we did that entry is we're going to do another entry. We're going to right click the setup folder from the options on the list and select new and click key from the expanded list. Name the new key lab config. Enter the following and give a hexadecimal value of one to each. The things that we are going to be entering is bypass TPM check, bypass RAM check, and bypass severe boot check. 
So we're back in the registry. We didn't leave it or nothing like that. Now, this is all during the install process. This can only be done during the install process. If you get into the recovery area and you're doing this, you did something wrong. You went the wrong, you made a wrong turn. All right, so I'm gonna enter the values as requested. We're gonna bypass EPM check. And I'm gonna just go ahead and list out all the values that I need to enter into lab config. So we'll just right click again and put that D word 32 bit value, bypass RAM check. We have to bypass it all. And then we need the third value, bypass secure boot check. And that's the, that's all you need to do to the registry. Once this is done, you're going to click and give each one a value, a hexadecimal value of one, just like that as instructed. Okay. Now with that said and done, we're going to exit the registry. Close out of that, click next, or click out of that, say you want to exit, and then click install now again. I don't have a product key, so uh, we'll proceed forward without the product key. I'm going for Pro, Windows 11 Pro. And everything should be good to go now. We're getting the terms and conditions. That's a lot to read. We're gonna do a custom install of Windows only. And since my drive is there, we're gonna install it on that unallocated space. And I'm gonna proceed with the installation. I'm going to wait a little bit just to see if it comes in, you know, see if I can get some files ready for installation, see if we're proceeding forward. And it worked. I have this running on this Dell R410 as a virtual machine. Power Edge 410. And it's beautiful how it worked for you, you know. This, I mean, it's a little slow, as you can see here, but this is like the first time loading. So if you can deal with it being slow, that's, that's the side effect of doing this sort of install. Everything may not work as expected. But uh, I'm just exploring it. Beautiful. So it looks good. It looks like possible daily driver for me. It has all the apps and I have access to my settings, top apps and that sort of thing. You have the Microsoft Store. So there's many possibilities here uh, that I could see. Well, hey, thank you for watching the video. And if you made it to this, end, this far in the video, thanks for being here. And I really appreciate you. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to comment and be sure to like the video on your way out. Thanks for watching and have a great day.